But the year of her return, the army founded by her father massacred nearly 3,000 pro-democracy protesters and set the stage for Suu Kyi's rise. The chaos caused by the crackdown forced the ruling generals to reform themselves as the State Law and Order Restoration Council, SLORC. They even promised elections in 1990, but they ensured that their biggest threat, Suu Kyi, was out of the picture by placing her under house arrest in 1989. Did the government give you opportunities to leave, to leave this house, to leave this country? Their attitude was that if I would leave Burma, I could be free any time. But I would certainly not have left the country and left my colleagues to face their troubles by themselves. It was, nothing, it was something that I could not think of doing. In their surprising concession to democracy, the promise of free elections, the ruling generals obviously had no idea of the outcome, no idea that the opposition NLD party would command any substantial support. The result of the 1990 election could not have been clearer. Despite the fact that its leader was locked away, the NLD won over 80% of the seats. But instead of taking office, many of its members were thrown into jail where they remain today. A new Amnesty International report tells us that little has changed in Myanmar. Political prisoners are still subjected to many forms of torture. We don't hold pol political business, uh, prisoners. We hold those who, uh, who, treat, who commit crime only. So there the are crime. no political no. prisoners in this country? No. Lieutenant General Chor Ba is the minister in charge of what is currently Myanmar's most crucial portfolio, tourism. What do we make of all these things? For instance, you know very well, of course, that United Nations report earlier this year that made some outrageous claims about what happened. But they don't here. go very deeply inside to see how, what, is, what are happening. But, sir, that there were some very specific things there that, that make one's hair stand on end, like beatings taking place, like uh, uh, shackling, like burning, like stabbing prisoners, like rubbing salt and chemicals. No, we don't have that thing. No. They're writing all the rubbish thing. It's, no, we don't have anything. No. So rubbing of salt and chemicals into prisoners' wounds, political prisoners' wounds? No, we don't have that thing. No. No, we don't have. Beatings, I think, no, stabbings, no beating, burnings? No, 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 no beating, no, no, no burning, no. It's uh, all the, what you call, it's, it's the misinformation. The stories that we hear about torture inside prisons here, about uh, unwarranted arrest, about political arrests, this is all the case? You know this to be true? Yes, I do. It is a fact that many people are in prison in Burma for their beliefs, for their political beliefs by Western accusations, what you call abuses in human rights, we do not take them as such. Set Mong acts as economic advisor to Slork. He, like those he answers to, believes that brutality is in the eye of the beholder. This is what Amnesty International says about this government. It talks about a persistent and ongoing pattern of human rights violations committed by Slork since it came to power. Mm -hmm. Wrong? Wrong. You're Definitely very, wrong. You're very confident that very your, confident. your country can stand on its human rights record? No, why not? You can. We really can. Your economic minister described the evidence gathered by human rights groups as trash. Do you agree? Well, I think, I would say not only trash, it's shocking. But while the regime stands accused of mistreating its people on a grand scale, it is also capable of bureaucratic pettiness. You can't even have a photocopier or a fax machine in Myanmar without the general's approval. Of course it would make it much easier for the authorities if they gave me a fax, because then they would know which one to tap, wouldn't they? Do you believe that your phone is tapped? Oh, I think so. One takes it for granted, really. So that any conversation you have with any one of your people or anyone from anywhere, media, you realise you're being listened to? Yes, it doesn't trouble me because we're not doing anything underhand. Mm. During her long, solitary years, Suu Kyi kept in touch with the world via her radio. This is London calling Asia. The program which is it true that you China? heard the fact that you'd been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize on the radio? Yes. 
So you were sitting by your radio one morning and all of a sudden heard you'd been awarded this One afternoon, honor. actually. One afternoon. Yes. Sue Chi's struggle is one of the most extraordinary examples of civil courage in Asia in recent decades. Do you accept that courage was a quality that was required of you over the past six years? I suppose so, not just of me, but of everybody else. And here I would like to define courage as doing what you think is right, in spite of the fact that you might be frightened from time to time. And I think lots of uh, my colleagues, I'm sure there have been times when they have been frightened for themselves or for their families. But they have, in spite of that, they went on to do what they felt they had to do. Even though her six years of house arrest have gone unnoticed by the state-owned press and her release has never been officially announced, Slork still pushes the line that Suu Kyi is a foreigner whose marriage to an Englishman, Michael Aris, and her half-English sons make her suspect. The generals of Slork have even rewritten the country's constitution to make it illegal for anyone married to a foreigner to hold political office in Burma. She's not electable because she happens to be married to a foreigner. You know? mm -hmm. And by virtue of that, she's not electable. She can never hold a political office. A government advisor that I was speaking to said, well, this is not her home. She has been out of this country for so many years. She doesn't have claims to calling this her home. Well, that's the way they like to think. But uh, the question is, uh, is it, do those who have stayed here and made a lot of troubles for the people here a greater right to call it their home? How do you think they work? Do their minds work logically? I do not think they could, their minds could work logically. Because uh, um, I support, I think it was Karl, Karl Popper who said that he didn't believe in evil, but he believed in stupidity. And I tend to support that statement. Uh -huh. So the, the people that you have had to, the people who have been your jailers over this time, are rather more stupid than they are evil? Well, let us say that they're certainly not using the better part of their brains. How do you think they feel about you now? You have to ask them that. I do not like to speculate on how other people feel about me. The people that we've spoken to still seem to spit out the expression, the lady. Oh, I see. <laughs> but at least they say lady for a change. <laughs> there are lots of other expressions that could have been noted, is that right? Exactly. Mm. What does she represent in this country, and what did her father represent in this country? Her father represents the whole country. He is a hero. He is worshipped by everyone here, including the military. He, is, he was the chap who founded this military. Has she inherited any of her father's heroism? Well, you see, I never had a you see, real association with her, with her to know you see, exactly whether she has shown any heroism, whether she has got a spirit of heroism, things like that. I wouldn't really know. That really does run counter to the world view of this tiny woman who most people believe has shown so much courage. Well, the facts is, you've got to base things upon facts. She stayed in the house for maybe about five years. Six. Six years, yes. Well, you call that as in heroism, but it's all your view. But not yours? No, well, not necessarily mine. Whether it was heroism that sustained her or not, Suu Kyi has been able to maintain a calm control that no doubt springs from her Buddhist faith. But at the core of everything, she says, is an unshakable belief that people can be just as good as they can be evil. Entire governments are made out of people, out of individuals and they are quite capable of deceiving themselves. Mm. And what would break that chain of deception? What helps break through it? The fact that most people are not prepared to be deceived. Do you think you will lead this country? That is not for me to say, and it's not the sort of thing that we think about. Uh, we have often said that our purpose is not to gain power. Our purpose is to bring democracy to Burma.